Happy Friday morning to you, uh, Azusa Pacific. The board of trustees of this university are the women and men who uh, guard the mission and they uh, look at our forward progress and they think about who God has called us to be. They serve voluntarily, they give of their time, talent, and treasure. They meet three times a year and one of those three times is during uh, a time when we have chapel. So here in the front are, are, are those women and men who serve as trustees. Also with them are students who have agreed to be discipled by our trustees. So would those students and trustees please stand so we can recognize you. Thank you. So I think that's a that's a great commitment. I don't know of many other uh, boards of colleges and universities that would give mentoring specifically to undergraduate students. And I know that both the students and the trustees will benefit from that. One of our trustees, uh, Dr. Nick Ifantides, is an alum of this university. And he is commonly referred to as Dr. Nick. He is the chief medical officer for the county of San Diego and he has dedicated his life, really, to the poor and the needy and the disenfranchised, the love of his life for his two daughters. We did a video of Dr. Nick a few years ago. Here it is, and then after this, Dr. Nick is up. Watch this video. You know, as I look back on the life that I used to have, really, I think it was a counterfeit form of existence. It wasn't like life at all. And it's sad to think that I spent so much of my existence depriving myself of living the life that I could have had. This is the Nick Efantides who loved baseball and give food. give you a popular local doctor. The physician with a reputation as a big man with a big heart. Come up with a rather unconventional way to lose weight. I'm tired of telling my patients, do as I say, not as I do. I did what's called a radical sabbatical. I went to all 50 states in a year and went to every major league ballpark in America and Canada. And while I was on the road trip, I did a drastic liquid protein diet doctor returned to family and friends after an eight-month sabbatical to heal himself. He's half the man he was. All he uh, did lose 267 pounds himself. 267 That's pounds. two people. I happened to Nick. It's a miracle. I've been praying for it for about seven years. And finally, God answered my prayer. My name is Dr. Nicky Fentides. I'm a medical physician. I graduated from Azusa Pacific in 1986 with a bachelor's degree in biology. Having been a guy who spent his whole life practicing medical hypocrisy, myself as being a board certified medical hypocrite, now I'm trying to generate epiphanies to let the world know change is possible. You know why? Because God did it in my own life. <laughs> I consider medicine to be a ministry. San Diego County is very unique in that it does not have a public health care system. That in terms of my heart for the poor, my heart for the indigent, there's a lot of people in this community who are not receiving basic services. Many of these folks are migrants and immigrants and so forth. And it's really a neat place because Jesus shows up every day. <laughs> It was really around the time that I was attending Azusa Pacific University that some of these convictions started coming into my life. I used to go to Mexico on a regular basis, and to people of Mexico and some other things that I was involved with locally it really got me thinking about the integration of the gifts that we have with the people in our community who need it the most. And so I can tell you that since graduating from medical school, I have never seen a patient with private health insurance and I never will. The world needs not just physicians and nurses, but physicians and nurses who love the world, who love the Lord, and who have an attitude of bringing the true meaning of health to the people that they're serving. There are so many people who feel so hopeless, who've basically given up, and they've initiated the process of dying. 
Hi, Dr. Nick. Um, I am on disability. I'm diabetic. I crushed my leg. Um, I'm 300 pounds female, and I just, I just need help so bad. Please give me a call and let me know if your program would help a person who is disabled. Um, I, I just need help. What I'm looking to do is to have a lasting impact on people. And I spend time with political leaders and business leaders and media leaders promoting perspective that health is not at the exclusion of taking into consideration one's spiritual well-being, rather than there being an exclusive reliance on the scapel or the prescription. True health involves the integration of Christ's love in the delivery of what health care is all about. You are contributing to the process of changing lives. I believe enhanced by changing your own life. People will always doubt what you have to say, but they have to believe what you do. Appropriate for one person to be so enormously and disproportionately blessed. I don't know why God has been so good to me, but I feel um, overwhelmed. Your health, your life is a gift. Honor your God by taking care of it. Good morning and thank you for taking the time to watch that. That was nine years ago and a few pounds back, but I thought it would give you a little bit of a taste of where I'm coming from. At the core of my belief, I said in that video, we live in a very cynical world and people doubt what we say, but they have to believe what we do. And you may find this hard to be true, but in my heart of hearts, I merely consider myself a beggar telling other beggars where I found the bread, seeking to let my little light shine so that you can see my good works. And as we sang in worship time, glorify our Father which is in heaven. In the spirit of transparency, I want to share with you an interesting experience I had on my way up here from San Diego on Wednesday late afternoon. Several of the board members were gathering at President Wallace's home for dinner that evening. I had a very hectic day. I've had a very hectic season with a recent promotion and the inheritance of a lot of extra responsibility at work and crazy things happening in San Diego like Zika virus and controversy about some of the things we're doing and spraying mosquitoes and I'm actually a single father raising two little girls now on my own, and life has been jammed and hectic. I spent almost all of the time driving up here on the phone, dealing with work calls. And as I was wa wrapping up those calls, I just made the transition from the 57 to the 210. I finally had a moment to myself, and I was feeling a little bit of a surge of anxiety because I knew I was going to be standing before all of you today, and frankly, I hadn't taken much time to prepare. And I didn't feel worthy. And my knees started to knock emotionally, and just at that moment, I kid you not, I was approaching the uh, Azusa Avenue exit, and I saw a sign. And the sign reminded me of something so powerful that I did something really crazy. I got off the freeway, I did a loop, I went back to Citrus Avenue, got back on the freeway, and pulled over and took a picture of that sign. Because I wanted to share that with you this morning. Because you see, the first time I saw that sign was 33 years ago. I had just finished my freshman year of college. At, at the time, it was called Grand Canyon College in Phoenix, Arizona. 
And my father and I were on our way to Pasadena to visit some Greek friends of ours who live there. And I kid you not, randomly as we were driving down the freeway, my father saw that sign, and in his accent, which you saw in the video, he goes, Nick, I think he's a Christian school. Let's check it out. We made a quick exit off the freeway. I was like, that, come on, we got to get to Pasadena. I was going back to Grand Canyon. Sovereignty, folks. We walk onto campus unannounced, find the admissions office. At the time, Dave Bixby was an admissions counselor, gave us a tour. There was a brother who had just been brought from Ohio, who's now in God's presence, named Dr. Dave Cherney, who had just been brought from a medical college there to start a pre-med program. And without transcripts, but based on my attitude of being passionate to be a physician, things were a lot more informal back then, David offered me a scholarship on the spot, and here I am. And what the Lord... What the Lord struck me with with Wednesday afternoon was, Nick, seriously, if I can use a sign for my purpose, I can use you too. In the name of Jesus, I pray that God uses me for the next few minutes that we have together. I also want to confess to you in the spirit of transparency that as I stand before you, and this may sound a little silly, but it has to do with the way I'm wired, I'm not really just thinking about you. You see, as I'm granted the honor of having a few minutes in your presence, what's going through my mind based on my wiring is not the several hundred or however many people are watching this at this moment. But what goes through my heart and mind is the countless thousands upon thousands of people in the future that you individually will be in a position to touch. Folks, when I graduated from here, I wasn't necessarily bored of director's material, if you know what I'm saying. I had no idea that the Lord would put me in a position now that I am today as the chief medical officer of the fifth largest county in the country with over 3.3 million people under my influence. And it makes me wonder, where are you going to be 33 years from now? Might you be invited as I have been to be on this stage? Might you be in a position that most would consider influential to have an impact, a massive impact, not just on individuals, but on entire region or society? As I think you heard in the video, I am convinced that I am not on this stage, I am not a member of this board of trustees, I'm not involved with any of the things that I'm involved with by accidents, by coincidence, by chance, or by happenstance. I can trace a lot of my current reality back to my time when I was sitting where you're sitting right now. And so I'm going to challenge you today in the very few minutes that we have together with a very simple reality. Today's decisions will be your reality tomorrow. Let me say that again. Today's decisions, tomorrow's reality. Pause with me for a quick moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, as so many others have prayed, to your glory and honor, I pray for the wisdom and the selflessness on my part to be a mouthpiece and for the generous receptivity in those hearts who are hearing this to receive anything of value that you choose to speak through me. Please, Lord. Amen. I want to share with you just a few verses, um, and we'll do something a little maybe unconventional and irreverent in a moment. 
I have a passage, five verses from the book of Proverbs that I want to read to you quickly. It is an extremely familiar passage, but I want to pull something a little bit out of it that perhaps is unfamiliar. And the passage is in Proverbs chapter 5, excuse me, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 10, and I'm going to initially read the NIV version. The Word of God speaks to us there by saying, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with the wealth, with your wealth, with the first fruits of all of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. With all due respect to the sacred, irreverent Word of God, I want to read you now another version I call the LBR version. You may have never heard of the LBR version. That's my let's be real version, okay? Proverbs 3. Trust in yourself with all your heart and lean on your own understanding. In some of your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight? Be wise in your own eyes. Ignore the Lord and embrace evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with what is convenient. Bring him the leftovers of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. I hope it's as ludicrous sounding to you as that is to me. But in grace, I want to lovingly challenge you and ask, which of those two versions can you better relate to? I want to now go back to the NIV version and call your attention to just a couple of the verses, as a matter of fact, the last two verses, verses 9 and 10, and read those for you again. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Folks, I know that Azusa Pacific is not an agricultural institution, but here is the thought that the Lord laid on my heart to share with you. Have you ever considered this season of your life to be your first fruit season of your existence? You know, the process of farming, I'm not a farmer, though I did grow up in an agricultural family and I do have some fruit trees. If you consider for a moment what the people of Israel had to go through in the old days in terms of toiling and depending on rain and trying to keep wild animals and pests away from their crops and how long it takes for crops to develop, and after all of that time, finally, the crop was ready. And what did God ask of them? After all of that time and effort, after all of that toiling, God asked them to bring him their first fruits as an act of sacrificial worship, not their leftovers. And being somebody who mentors a lot of young men and who has been mentored and who still feels like a youth member in some ways, I have to tell you, Our flesh is wired with that mentality that someday I will get to it. This is my time to have some fun, but when I graduate, then I'm going to get serious with the Lord. Don't kid yourself. 
I challenge you with a consideration that this is the first fruit seasons of your life, ladies and gentlemen, and the consideration of making that tie-in between how your decisions today will impact your reality tomorrow. And I have to tell you, it's tough coming to grips with this concept. It's not easy. It's very counterintuitive. And this is where the richness of this community that we as trustees, I as an individual, are so passionate about is something that I pray in the name of Jesus you will take full advantage of. Because it's a cycle. And it's not just about being a mentor. I believe it is being mentored as well. And let me quickly illustrate that with a little bit of the experience that I had as becoming a medical physician. Currently in my role, I'm primarily an executive who spends most of his time in boardrooms and meetings and public places and media and speaking. I don't take care of sick people directly that often. But much of my life was spent in emergency rooms and clinics doing crazy things like delivering babies. And I have to tell you, the first time that I ever delivered a baby, I didn't go in there and I was like, I got this. I'll take care of it. I watched with humongous eyes, with bewilderment, to the crazy things that were unfolding before me. And I had to watch it a few times before I was even ready to participate directly myself. I was a little bit full of myself as a younger man, so I'll never forget the first time I actually delivered a baby. I was like, I had an attitude, I got this. I got there, positioned myself. That baby was a lot slippier than I expected. Played a little hacky sack, I almost dropped the baby on the ground. There was a little bungee cord thing going on. I don't mean to be too graphic, but I gotta keep it real. It was an extremely humiliating experience. Fortunately, I was a larger-than-life big man, so the baby kind of fell into the marshmallow of Dr. Nick. But it was not a good scene. The next time, I was a lot more humble, and I ended up delivering about 60 babies or so. But can I tell you something? I never really felt like I knew what it meant to deliver a baby until I was ready to teach somebody else to deliver a baby themselves. And in some ways, to me, that is that microcosm of the discipleship model, the distinctive to me of this community, the reason, as President Wallace acknowledged a few moments ago, that we as trustees have committed to living in integrity in putting into actions what we are praying for and hoping to facilitate and steward throughout the campus ministry of Azusa Pacific, we've got to have the credibility of doing it ourselves. And just as we are expected to give financially, I am so blessed that we are raising the bar with the expectation of giving relationally as well. And you can doubt what we say, but you have to believe what we do. And I was so blessed a couple days ago when Coach Franson showed me some of the stats in terms of the amazing things that are already happening in terms of participation in D groups and mentors. And I was w w filled with wonder to hear about the opportunity you are all going to have for a student-led campus-wide prayer meeting this coming Tuesday evening, which I would prayerfully ask you to consider being a part of. Being mentored, but at the same time being a mentor to someone. Brothers and sisters, this world is starving for real people who have real solutions to life's real problems. And it is a very messy world that we live in. It is not easy for me to live out my faith in the public government role that I have today. And I would not be able to do it without the accountability and the blessing that I receive of being mentored and mentoring others at the same time. 
So I ask you in the name of Jesus to receive just three simple takeaways today. Today's decisions, tomorrow's reality. Consider this to be the first fruit season of your life. Pursue the opportunity to be mentored and take advantage of that, but don't wait. Commit to mentorship yourself. Find someone in need in your church, in your community, in the neighborhood through your engagement. I enjoyed getting to know OC last year. I don't know if you're here, OC. We're overdue for some more Korean buffet, if you know what I'm talking about. And I'm so blessed and look forward with great anticipation to my commitment to disciple and mentor John this year as well. Last week, a week ago right now, my friend, Coach Franson, showed you a picture of his grandchildren and asked you a favor to lead them. The greatest joy in my life, if we could put up the picture of my daughters, is the relational investment and stewardship and number one physical priority that God has given me to be a daddy. But I too need your help. I'm hoping someday they will come to this university. I would ask in the name of Jesus that you set an example, that you fight to advocate for a culture and that you lead and consider the consequences of your decisions today on the young who are following tomorrow. God bless your hearts and thank you for your time. Go in peace. <laughs>